Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Sometimes, Kitty, I think if I have to play one more game of checkers with Doc. Oh, so well, that's what you think. Sometimes you find yourself listening to the silence. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have complained. No, why? Here comes something. Chester with Tom Carl, and he's probably looking for you. Well, oh, home, Miss Kitty. Uh, Mr. Dillon, Tom Carl here just in our office. I didn't know if I ought to bother you about it or not. Well, I see you made a decision, Chester. Hmm? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yes, sir. Well, anyways, why don't you just tell him what you've seen, Tom? Well, Marshal, I, I don't really know what it was, but well, it was down there in the willows, thrashing around like maybe it was some kind of an animal or something. Well, I got to think maybe it was an engine or a road agent or something. Now, wait a minute, Tom. Where was this? Well, down by the river, right under the bank. And what exactly did you see? Now, it was too dark to see, really, but I could hear it thrashing around, making a kind of a moaning sound. The way them willows was bending and waving around, I, I knew it must be pretty big. Well, why didn't you go in and look? Now, how'd we know what it might be? It was dark. We? Well, me and, me and a young lady, we just left there quick, man. Oh, I see. Now, just where was this, Tom? Well, out by the point, just west of town, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've heard about the buggies being parked out there. Tom, you sure that this wasn't your imagination? Oh, no. No, sir. There was something there. I know that. An animal, maybe, or engine. That's why I thought I ought to come and tell you. Are you sure it wasn't some friends of yours playing a trick on you and your young lady? No, ma'am. They'd have showed themselves. I know. I, I think you ought to go look, Marshal. All right, Tom. Uh, just to go get a lantern, will you? Yes, sir. Come on, Tom. Well, Mark, you were starved for excitement. Yeah. Some excitement, huh? <laughs> you know what it sounds like to me? No, what? I think you're going on a snipe hunt. Over this way, Marshal. Come on, Doc. Uh, it's a fine thing to get a man out of bed for. And he said there was a moaning sound. You might be needed. Yeah, probably some blame drunken cowboy. You had nothing better to do. Yeah. What about sleeping? It's near midnight. Now you're always complaining about not being able to sleep anyway, Doc. Right, right down there, Marshal. I don't see anything now, but it was right down here. All right. Chester, bring the ladder now. Yes, sir. Where we're going to get wet feet. You can catch his death on like this. Over here, Chester. Hmm. 
gracious. You find something, Matt? Yeah, something for you, Doc. Come over here. Oh, my God, Mr. Dillon. You recognize him? Yeah. It's old Tug Marsh. That trapper who went through here with his partner last fall. Did you hold that lantern a little bit higher there, Willie Chester? Yeah, sure enough. Yeah, that's better, right there. Uh, any car on there would recognize him. What could have done that to him, Mr. Dillon? Uh, some big animal of some kind, a bear, maybe, or a wolf. This close to town? That's possible. Well, Doc, what about him? Well, he's alive. That's about all I can say. There's one thing, though, Mayor. These wounds are crusted. Oh, what do you mean? I mean he didn't get them tonight. Or even today. This happened three, four days ago. Maybe more. But then I don't see how... He's come a long way since then. Look at his knees. And his hands. You hear? He's crawled for miles. With wounds like that? Half naked and half dead? He was half dead when he started, Matt. He's a lot more than that now. He's hanging on by a thread. We'd better get him to my office. How's the patient? Well, I don't know how, but he's alive. And not just alive, but kicking, too. Oh? Hey, Doc, I'm hungry. <laughs> See what I mean, Matt? You saw how he was not 12 hours ago. Who would have believed it? Yeah. Well, can I talk to him? Why not? I can't keep him quiet anyway. <laughs> Hello, Tug. Howdy, Marshal. Why don't you make that dang doctor give me something to eat? I'm making you some soup. Now shut up. Soup? I ain't that in a week and he gives me dishwater. Well, you couldn't keep anything else down. And you need nourishment. Oh, dang it. If I could just get out of this darn bed. Take it easy, Tug. You've been through an awful lot. You're telling me what I've been through? Now I'm asking you. You want to tell me about it? Uh, it ain't no affair of the law. Uh, maybe not. I just happen to be curious. Well, if you had any brains, you could see. A tangle with a bear, that's all. When was this and where? Oh, maybe six, seven days down the nations, out toward the Cimarron. Yeah, God, you eat this, Tug. Dead dishwater. It's good for you. You need something warm in you. Me, Doc, you, you ain't told me. You think you can fix me up? <laughs> There's nothing to fix up. The scar tissue's already forming. I ain't going to be so pretty, huh? Oh, well, that bear took half your scalp and a good part of your face. So there's nothing I can do about that, Tug. Yeah, I never was too handsome anyways. But that's all right. I'm a trapper, not a drummer. And them Cheyenne squalls ain't scared off by a few scars. What about my arm? You lost some muscle, but you'll have some movement left. Tug, the main thing is that you're alive and mending. Here, now, take some of that soup. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> With rest and a little food, you'll be walking around again in a few days. Maybe trapping again in a month. I got something to do first. Tug, tell me what happened, huh? I told you, I tangled with a grizzly. Walked into him in this thicket, and the critter attacked me before I get my gun up. Finally killed him with my knife, but not before he chawed me. What about your partner, Billy Adams? Yeah, he couldn't wait. Couldn't wait? Yeah, found me near dead. Done what he could, but wasn't much. We both figured I was a goner. And there's hostiles around, Comanches. He's nervous, I guess, sitting beaver alone with a dying man on his hands. Only I wouldn't die for him so as he could bury me and have done with. You mean he left you? Yeah, and next morning, he took everything. Didn't even leave me a knife to slip between my ribs. Now, you wouldn't do that to an animal, now, would you, Marshal? Just leave him to die alone in the wilderness? You'd slit his throat for him at least. But Billy wouldn't do that for me. And that's when I decided... What? That I wouldn't die. That I'd come after him. I'd live to find him. So I started crawling. Five days on my hands and knees without food or water. And when I find him, I'm going to kill him. But not fast. No, no, no. Slow. Real slow. Oh. Can't say I blame you much, Tug. 
If there is one thing I'm thankful for. What's that? Billy Adams isn't in Dodge. I'd hate to have to arrest you for murder. Well, then as long as I'm here, you better see he stayed away. She's actually edible today. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, how's your patient these days, Doc? Mm, you mean a star boarder, don't you? Yeah, well, I guess he's been around here long enough to be called that. Uh... Three weeks. He isn't even about to leave. Uh, is he still complaining of his aches and pains, Doc? No, no, it doesn't even bother now. He's just enjoying himself. Mm. <laughs> At Doc's expense. Matt he even bought him clothes. Well, he didn't have anything left, did he? Uh, I've seen him walking around town a couple of times, Doc. He seems almost back to normal. Well, yes. Well, considering everything, though, it, uh, it has been a miraculous recovery. You know, I'm kind of surprised he doesn't want to be getting on about his business. Well, the truth is, he does. He's staying here on my orders. Oh, well, medical reasons, or are you trying to slow him down? Well, if I can help to keep him out of trouble, why not? You've kind of taken a liking to your old coot yourself. Haven't you, man? Yeah, I'm afraid I have, Doc. Um, what kind of trouble are you talking about, Doc? The kind a man gets into when he's bitter about something. You mean Billy Adams? Yeah. Maybe we could keep Tug here long enough. He could cool down, Kitty, but uh, I don't know how long Doc can afford the expense. Hey, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? You know who just rode into town? He's down at Moss Grimmick's right now. Oh, uh, who? Billy Adams. Good, Amy. Now, uh, it just goes to show you I'm not as smart as I thought. I should have sent Tug packing. Uh, it's Billy Adams who's going to be sent packing, Doc. And right now. Hey, Moss. Oh. Hello, Marshal. He's out back, shooing his horse. Huh. You, uh, you didn't tell him anything about, uh, about Tug being here or alive, huh? Wasn't my business to, Marshal. Good. Billy? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, Marshal. What are you doing here in Dodge, Billy? Oh, they're passing through. Shoeing a horse, buying supplies. I'm going on west, back to the mountains. Why, Marshal? Well, the last time he went through here, you had a partner, Billy. What happened to him? Oh. Hmm. I didn't know anybody in Dodge heard about that. Uh, somebody from Pueblo come through and told the story, huh? Suppose you tell it to me, huh? Well, just the way you heard, Marshal. Powerful sad thing. Tug got killed by a bear. He got caught in a thicket with a big grizzly. Killed Tug outright, did it? No. No, he lasted till next day. Or well, nothing I could do for him, though. He was he was clawed so bad. Oh. Yeah. So you buried him, huh? Oh. That's it, huh? Somebody found the body. You no. Know, you no, know, I felt bad about that, Marshal. I, I I didn't have time to bury him. There was Comanche snuffing around, and I, I had to get out of there quick without no fuss or no noise. So I, uh, I left him in that thicket. I figured he'd be just as safe there as in a shallow grave, what was left to him. Besides Tug, he didn't put much stock in ceremony. You made just one mistake, Billy. What? You should have made sure he was dead. What do you... What do you mean, Marshal? He's alive. He... Right here in Dodge. He is? Oh, I'm right glad to hear that. 
Oh, I really am. I'm not so sure you will be, Billy. Maybe Tug didn't put much stock in ceremony, but he's sure looking for you. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he would be. And my advice to you is to get on that horse and ride. Well, no, I couldn't do that, Marshal. Why not? Well, I, I got to see him. I got to explain. Look, Billy, I don't care about you, but I don't want to see Tug up for murder. Or see him shot well, down and No, Marshal, it, it wouldn't be like that. You I see, think maybe it would. And I'm telling you to get out of town now. All right, Marshal. I'll oblige you. I'll camp just outside town. Just, just west. You tell Tug that, huh? You tell him I'll be waiting right there for him. No. Well, there's things we got to talk about, Marshal. There's money I owe him for his split of the furs and I'll all. I'll tell him nothing, Billy. Listen, Marshal. We was partners, Tug and me. And friends, even if he was a lot older than me. Now, I guess this here is something that's got to be settled between us, one way or the other. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Chester. Did you see Billy? Did you tell him? Yeah, I told him. Well, the whole town's outside, Mr. Dillon, holding their breath to see what's going to happen. Chester, you didn't tell him. I didn't have to tell nobody. Plenty of folks seen him riding right down Front Street. And well, I suppose Tug knows. I don't know. He's up there, Doc. Is that where you're going? Yeah. You reckon there'll be a shooting, Mr. Dillon? Not if I can help it, Chester. Oh, Matt! Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, now, don't try to stop me, Marshal. Get out of my way. I see you've heard the news, Tug. Yeah, I hear it all right. Ain't nobody going to stop me. You don't even have a gun. You're going to tackle him with your bare hands? Maybe you will. I could break him in two. Well, he's got a gun, so maybe you better think it over, huh? Nothing you can say is going to stop me, Marshal. Now, wait a minute, you obstinate old fool. Billy was your partner. He was your friend, so he deserted you. All right, maybe you got a cause for a grudge. Maybe. All right. But what good's it going to do for one of you to get killed just to satisfy your need for revenge? Tug, he wants to give you your half of the profits from the furs and trapping outfit. You talked to him? Yeah, I did. And he told me his side of it. He thought you were already dead. Yeah, that's a lie. Maybe it is. But he seemed mighty surprised that you were alive. Yeah. And he was glad, too. Glad? <laughs> bet. It's true. And he wouldn't take my advice to run away. He's waiting for you outside town. He told me to tell you that he wants to see you, Tug. Yeah. I'll see him all right. As soon as I get me a gun. Tug, isn't there anything I can say that'll stop you? Ain't him? none of your business, Marshal. I got a right to go after him, Ada. Yeah, I guess maybe you have. All right, then. I'm going to find me a gun. Maxwell, what are you going to do? Not much I can do, Doc. They'll tangle sooner or later. I'm just going to be there to see that whatever happens, happens fair. Billy. Tug's on his way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> sit down, have some coffee. Are you cooking? Oh, I might as well. I take it you're going to stay for the show. What are you planning on doing, Billy? Well, you'll see, Marshal. I don't think it's none of your business. Look, Billy, there's still time. Why don't you get on that horse and go? It's going to save an awful lot of trouble for everybody. <laughs> You don't know Tug real good, do you, Marshal? He'd only get madder if I run. He'd just keep hunting till he found me again. Besides that... What? Well, he... I, I guess he's got a right to... He's got a right to hold a hate for me. I've done a wrong thing. Leave him like that. Billy. Hmm? You really didn't think he was dead, did you? No, I... But I thought it was just a matter of minutes, and I... There was minutes might have meant I'd be dead, too. 
And I guess it was wrong of me to think of saving my own life. Well, at least that was a human mistake to me. I'm just glad now that I didn't go ahead and do what I almost did, what I thought I should have done. What do you mean? Well, you know what you do for any dying animal. Took out my knife. I, I held it up to his throat. I, I couldn't bring myself to it, and I'm glad now. Yeah. In a way, me being a coward that way, you know, that saved his life, and I'm glad of that. He done a lot for me, Marshal. He was, he was like a father to me. Taught me all I know. How could you go up and leave him, Billy? Maybe I just couldn't stay and see him die. I don't know. it. Well, he's out there. Huh? Where? You sure? Oh. <laughs> Marshal, him and me living the way we do, we hear things, we see things that town folks miss there. Don't you worry now, now. It'll come out the way you want. What do you mean? Well, I can't fight him, Marshal. But I'll make it look all right so you won't have to arrest him. Now, wait a minute, Billy. <clears throat> Tug? Come on in. Coffee's hot. Hello, Billy. Biscuits be ready directly, Tug. Now, listen, Tug. Don't worry, Marshal. I didn't even get a gun. I guess I couldn't have used it if I had. Billy, a trapper needs a partner. Good ones is hard to find. You can't expect them to be perfect, not make a mistake or two. <coughs> Tug. Now just pour the coffee, Billy. Plenty of time for talk later. Oh, sure, Tug, sure. Won't you have some coffee, Marshal? <laughs> I don't mind if I do. Directed by Norman McDonald, starts William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Dunkel, with editorial supervision by John Nestor. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Lawrence Dobkin, and Vic Perrin. Marley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Our thanks to TV Radio Mirror, and to you, our listening audience, for selecting Gunsmoke as the best dramatic program on radio for the fifth consecutive year. The results of this annual poll appear in the current issue of TV Radio Mirror. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX Radio.